Welcome back, I'm Sid. If you've been ignoring histograms or if you aren't sure you're using them the right way, then keep watching to start using histogram like a boss. Histograms are everywhere. They are on the back of your camera, in photo and video editing apps, and they all work exactly the same way. But before we get into the how, let's take a look at why would you need a histogram in the first place. You see, our eyes are great at comparing two images side by side. But when it comes to analyzing a single image, they might not be as reliable as you might think. For example, camera LCDs or monitors when seen in a dark room appear brighter and then in a bright ambient light appear darker. In fact, we can't even see an LCD under a bright sunlight. Since histograms don't vary in different viewing conditions, they can be reliably used to take perfectly exposed photographs and edit them with sharp details in Photoshop. Now that you know why you need a histogram, let's take a look at what exactly is a histogram. Simply put, a histogram is a graphical representation of brightness levels of the pixels found in the image. Let's break this down. So a histogram, which looks like this mountain range, is nothing but a very simple visual representation of the pixels of your image. And how are these pixels mapped? Do you see this black and white gradient bar in the horizontal axis? All the pixels are distributed across the horizontal axis according to the brightness levels ranging from shadows on the left to midtones in the center and highlights on the right. Most histograms don't show us this black and white gradient bar, so it is really important that you memorize that the left area is for shadows, center is for midtones, and the right is for highlights. This is true for all histograms in camera or photo or video editing softwares. And the peaks and valleys in the histogram show us how many pixels from the image are there at a certain brightness level. The taller the peak, the higher the number of pixels we have for that same brightness level. And in the valleys, we have very few pixels in the image at those brightness levels. The pixels may peak all the way to the top, which only tells us that there are a lot of pixels for that particular brightness level, which is just plain information for you and not any kind of warning. Histograms by nature are based on continuous distribution of data across the horizontal axis. They are not based on the height of the vertical bars like in a common bar graph. So peaks and valleys in a histogram don't matter for reading exposures. It is important to keep in mind that these are not actual number of pixels in the image. A histogram shows us only the portion or the ratio of all the pixels mapped across the entire range of brightness levels. So how many brightness levels or tonal values are there? A histogram displays exactly 256 brightness levels from a scale of 0 to 255, with one vertical bar for each of those levels ranging from pure black on the left to pure white on the right. It doesn't matter if your image is 8 bits, 10 bits, 12, 14 or 16 bits. The histogram will always display 256 levels of brightness. If you want to know why exactly 256, I highly recommend to watch the previous video on bit depth linked above. Just within Photoshop, there are three places to find the histogram, within the levels and notice the sliders are also black and white corresponding to the brightness levels with black being 0 and white 255. An optional one in curves which can be turned off or on and finally we have the regular histogram panel which can be accessed from windows and then click on histogram. The histogram panel comes in different viewing options. For example, the all channel view shows us all the channels one below the other. You can also choose to show your channels in color for easier recognition. For most users, the expanded view is ideal. You can choose to keep the statistics on, which will give you a lot of technical information, for example, the total number of pixels. And when you click anywhere in the histogram, you can see the brightness level of that point. You can also see here that it ranges from 0 to 255. The pixel count shows you the amount of pixels situated at each brightness level. So this is really useful information for understanding a histogram, but for judging the exposure on the go, this data is really not required. And here we have the channel display options. First is the RGB channel, which is a composite of red, green and blue channels. Since red, green and blue are additive colors, they combine to create white color on your display device. So the RGB composite channel shows you the brightness values of each color pixel created by the mixing of the red, green and blue channel throughout the image. Next are the individual red, green and blue channels. Like this red channel for example shows you all the red pixels distributed across different brightness levels. Then is the luminosity histogram which looks very similar to the composite RGB channel. But unlike RGB composite which represents the overall brightness of the image, the luminosity channel is based on the grayscale values. So the luminosity histogram should be used to give a better feedback on tonal clipping without the interference of color. And finally comes the color histogram option, which unlike the RGB composite histogram, shows all the color channels overlapping each other. The color overlay histogram can be quite confusing as it has yellows and magentas and cyan as well in it. They are simply results of combining red and green, red and blue and green and blue additive colors. 
To really understand RGB colors and the difference between luminosity and brightness values, I urge you to watch this short video on color theory linked above. This will give you a strong grasp on the basics which will help you understand these different histograms better. The Photoshop histogram panel can also show you the histogram for each individual layer in your document. From the source tab, choose selected layer and the histogram will display data for the selected layer. You can also select a part of your photo to see where the selected pixels lie in the histogram. So with the help of luminosity mask selections, if I choose one of the bright highlights, you can see in the preview what the mask will look like. Now, watch what happens to the histogram as soon as I click on load as selection. See, the histogram has moved to the right, which if you remember is the highlights region. So the histogram is showing exactly where the selected pixels lie. The exclamation warning sign that you might notice in the histogram is not an exposure warning of any kind. It simply means that the current view is not the most accurate and the histogram needs to be refreshed. So by clicking on either the exclamation mark or the refresh icon, Photoshop will update the cache and re-render the histogram. Now if I deselect and choose a luminosity mask for shadows and load it as selection, you will see the histogram move to the left which is the shadows region and this shows exactly where the selected pixels lie. Regardless of all these different versions in histograms, they are all read exactly the same way. So let's see how to read a histogram. At this point, we have established that a histogram represents amount of pixels from the image on the vertical scale mapped across 256 brightness levels ranging from 0 which is pure black to 255 which is pure white on the horizontal scale with 128 being the mid gray point. And the way you read a histogram is by dividing it into the shadow region, midtone and the highlight region. When we look at the distribution of pixels by region, it immediately reveals several things about the image without even looking at the actual image. For example, a well exposed image with high dynamic range, meaning images that have good shadow and highlight details, will display a continuous range of brightness levels from black to white. The shape doesn't matter and will always be different for different well exposed images. What matters is the amount of pixels are well distributed on both the sides of the 128 midpoint gray. And if you're thinking, what should an ideal histogram look like, that's a wrong way to go about reading a histogram. Remember, histograms can only give information. They cannot tell you if your image is looking pleasing. So what you should really be asking is what your histogram should not look like. Thankfully, histograms can just as easily reveal problems. And there are three main signals that you should look out for. First, histograms can help you differentiate between a low key or an underexposed image or high key and overexposed image. But to see this difference in the histogram, you need to first understand the difference visually in those images. So pay attention to this. A well exposed low key image is predominantly dark and has a lot of pixels in the shadow areas. But what sets it apart from an underexposed image is that it has to have at least a tiny area of interest which is well lit or exposed. This will result in a few pixels being present in the midtones and even the highlights. An underexposed image will never have any spike in the highlights. In fact, they won't even have any pixel visible in the highlights area. Similarly, for high key images, which have predominant highlights and small amounts of midtones and shadows, most of the pixels will stay in the highlights area of the histogram, while a tiny train of pixels will go all the way to the shadow region and maybe end up in a small spike, as you can see here. While an overexposed image on the other hand, will have all the pixels strictly in the highlights area. So just by looking at the histogram, we can tell if it's a low key, high key, under or overexposed image. You can even tell the extent of over and under exposure or if any areas are being clipped to pure black or white. So the second signal you need to look out for are pixel spikes up against the left or right wall of the histogram box. Spikes in the two corner walls indicate clipping or loss of detail. The left side of the histogram begins all the way from the left wall of the histogram which has the value 0 and is pure black and it ends in the right wall which has the value of 255 and is pure white. For this reason, the pixel spike on the left wall turns those shadow pixels into pure black, also known as crushed blacks, while the pixel spike on the right wall blows the highlight details or turns those highlight pixels into pure white. When the information is cut off like that, it is called clipping the exposure. Clipped areas are often unrecoverable, especially in the highlight area. Recovering shadows is possible but at the expense of noise. So remember this rule, if it's sticking, it's clipping. But keep in mind that this holds true only for the left side for shadows and right side for the highlights. It doesn't apply to the ceiling. And just like exposure clippings, histograms can also tell us about color clipping. Some histograms that offer separate red, green and blue channels let us see if any particular color channel has a pixel spike against its side walls. This tells us that that particular color is clipping. The third problem that a histogram reveals is loss of tone and color details. Since histograms are based on continuous distribution of data, 
Any gaps in the histogram show the histogram has lost data in those gaps. That means there is not even a single pixel present in those brightness level causing loss of details in that region. This usually happens during editing where the image histogram gets stretched and it happens more on the 8-bit image and very minimal if you're working on a 16-bit image. So ideally you should always do your exposure edits on a raw file which is non-destructive. So now that you know how to read a histogram, you need to make sure that you're reading the right one. Because yes, there are a couple of misleading histograms that you need to be aware of. Like in this first one, histogram displays found in digital cameras are based on JPEG previews and not raw. The histogram in your camera can be made more accurate for raw images by choosing a flat or a neutral picture style. The color space option in your camera applies only for JPEG files and this choice affects the histogram as well. So choose the Adobe RGB color space setting instead of sRGB as it has a larger color gamut. Also, keep in mind that changing your lens will change your histogram even if you leave all the settings the same. So an f2.8 aperture on one lens will not necessarily be the same on an f2.8 on another lens. The second histogram that could be misleading is when you're editing in Adobe Camera Raw. If you have the workflow color space set at Pro Photo RGB, now watch what happens to the histogram when I turn the workflow color space to sRGB. See how the color channels spike at the sidewalls, resulting in saturation clipping? You can click on the clipping indicators on the top sides to preview which area is affected. So once you're aware of the color space differences in the histogram, this is a great tool in Adobe Camera Raw as it tells us whether a particular image will clip in one color space or the other. For this and many other reasons explained in the color space video linked above, I always recommend to set your workflow color space to Pro Photo RGB. Lightroom histogram on the other hand uses Melissa RGB color space which is similar to Pro Photo. You can turn on soft proofing by pressing S to see what your exported histogram data may look like. So the exported histogram data may be different if converted to a smaller color space like sRGB or Adobe RGB. Another cool feature of both Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw histogram panel is that it also serves as an interactive editing tool. By moving the cursor over the Lightroom histogram, you can select those areas and by dragging them to left or right, you can adjust various parameters like the black point, shadows, mid-tone exposure, highlights and the white point. Just under the histogram, we have the name of the selected parameter you're modifying and on the right side, the value of that selected parameter. One of the best ways to adjust tones is to hold down the Alt or Option key and drag one of these parameters. This will give you a clipping preview for that parameter and this technique works very well with the Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw histogram. So you should definitely give it a try. And if you want a full Photoshop levels and curves editing tutorial to compress or expand the histogram, let me know in the comments below. And make sure to click on subscribe and then ring the bell so you're notified when the video releases. Anyway, so I hope this video gave you a better understanding about histograms. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for watching.